Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to an exciting, everything and amazing propaganda cast from your host and Pearl Dane, the one, the only master propaganda here of Psych Defender of the Fatherland. Of it a glorious near delirious one one here on Emily Fields in the north of this poly D. Fighting for the Orwell Command West Germany. Taking on the role here of the 10th Panzer de Schoen here with elite armored Luther for Grand Forces and Grand Offensive in the south of this as you are fighting for the Red Army, the Soviet Union, Comrade Stalin here trudging ahead with the Third Guards Mechanized Corps featuring parts and tactics, Gat Motor and Airborne Troops, certainly to uh, not quite as common commanders as Guard Motor. Fultz Gunner Kuhwagen versus Double Conscripts. Big hearty thanks to my Patreon supporters for keep the Propaganda Cast going with their money on a monthly basis. A big thanks to all those other people who join my Patreon Patreon. Links in the description. So, up north here, Sturm Pioneer busy for Paul E.D. Fultz is heading out there as well. So far, very quite up near between Paul E.D. and Asher Bloss. The Kuhwagen there rolling ahead. The Kuhwagen, well, obviously, high utility vehicle in the German army, was used for reconnaissance. Also used as an ambulance as well, they fang messages and command vehicles, a little fun note there. And of course just transporting troops. In fact, you believe some reconnaissance units would have been heavily mounted in Kubelwagens, or its more amphibious cousin, the Schwimmwagen, which was apparently very popular with the Waffen SS. Second full squad there for Paul E. D. in the west side here we got the Indians bring up the Ashra Blue looking to probe up the left flank here. Straight for the Carponti. Paul D leading aggressively here. There's a might of the Kubelwagen. Seems in this case to be mounted with an MG 34 maybe or something else. And it's also the engineers there. Concentrating out here for Asher. Lining up for a fresh push here. Three conscripts have found. Would be a fourth, in which case it could be airborne. She'll find out, I imagine, in a few moments. What's going to be another engineer squad? I suppose it could also be partisans. Trot there for Paul D. We got Elite Armored. Featuring the 221. Emergency repairs. Panzer Commander. Shells and the Storm Tiger. And you need to definitely trip before they get absolutely murdered out. Fourth console of the fascists, so increases the odds of this being airborne troops. Though could still be Gart Motor. Could even be partisans, but I would say it slightly weighs more towards the possibility this is a gut or airborne troops here for Asher. Fourth conscript squad almost done here. Sandbag's been dug in the Western Point. And there we go. 2 to 1 being rushed out here for Paul D and the German army. And there we go. It is airborne troops. With the airdrop weapons, airdrop heavy machine guns, airborne rally points, which no one ever uses, guards airborne troops, and the tactical Stormbeck rocket run. Trucks are out there for Paul D. He's one of the few players who still uses the trucks to actually push around enemy infantry. Most players at this point hasn't done that in years, but Paul D, through thick and thin, continues to utilize this element. So, go figure. Sandbags here, but this few point conscripts had to work there hauling sandbags and dirt. The center of the force coming up. We got the country under there as well. Two to one, almost done there for Paul. Sam X, right about done here. Truck rushing in, backed up with the Sturm Pioneer. The Kuhwagen here, also on reserve, possibly. Two to one, ramming there. Truck charging in there. He's going to try and push around Asher's troops, but there you go. Asher had the grenades research. Asher was ready for Paul's antics here and will absolutely pelt the truck here. The troops still get pushed around. T and the consequence will be hard to fall back. So maybe this could still be worth it. He can also sell the truck for a bit of fuel. But even then, bit of a loss here. As of course, you also like to see the 50 munitions being expended on a truck as a win. I don't know. Hard to say exactly how Paul views this engagement. Not the truck is wildly expensive either. Can't see how much it costs. Oh, wait. 2 to 1, they're joining in there with its machine gun as well. They're turning to the conscripts. Full to Stumpin and pushing back the front of XC. Needs left to hold up here. Western fuming grab there by Asher, though, even as the engagement in the east is turning. Quite explosive and not quite on the way. They are making progress in the West here against Pauli D and the German army. Back here, healing going on. Then we got both research upgrades research here for Asher. Two to one. We got the cool button sending out. Ground Western pump the conscripts. Digging in. Truck on the way there. Going straight for the point there. Truck almost done. Yep, salvaged it for a bit of extra fuel. And there you go, second truck out here for Paul. So to one the conscripts here. Grand points here, trying to deny Asher access to the fuel in the west there as well. Support company got there for Asher. Probably going to be for field guns, could also be for mortar, for machine guns. I imagine Asher's going to just airdrop them. One of the reasons this pop commander is still fairly popular is airdrop hay machine guns are pretty good. 
Plus, of course, the airdrop SVD-40s are pretty good too. Occasionally, you might even see some players go for the Guards Airborne Troops, but uh, they typically tend to be a minority of Airborne Troop players. Contrast the Vultures around the centre here. Western Victor Monks is back up north here. The skirmish continues. Armoured Car and Coupe Wagner slowly bleeding out the conscripts here. Clearly concerned about trying to get closer flank in because they might, you know, oorah out and then pelt over there into tank grenades. So Paul is just staying here at a distance where there is no risk of suddenly getting rushed out there by the shrubbery by a bunch of, you know, filthy conscripts. And the Sandia Fund continues. Paul's men are being bled out, dried up here in the face of Ash's meat grinder tactics. Can start here, drop one weapons here against the Germans. Focus quarter, they're almost wiped out. Very close call there, in fact, for Paul. Exceedingly close. Straight for the car point here. Kubag 2 to 1 nearby. Battle group headquarters for Paul. No big surprise. So you'll see some players go for Mechanized Regiment. There you go. Asher keeps up the attack here. Advances for the motherland against Paul's possessions here. Overwhelmed his men are forced to retreat here. Field on the way there. No surprise there. Going to be useful against the 2 to 1. As a person, fear the Kubag, though know, you might argue that's overkill. And then you remember there's no such thing as overkill. Certainly not in the Red Army. Of all armies. And then, you know, again, possibly also concerned about either flak half track here from Paul or, you know, he looks a puma. So, all the way field, of course, utility, in part because it also doubles as artillery. So, typically, as a so play, it's very difficult to punish you for rushing out a field gun because, like, even if they don't go for vehicles, you still got an artillery piece. Mine's here in the west. Assist guns heading at me, ground points here, digging in. Again, note the consistency with which Azure Blood just orders the conscripts to dig in with sandbags. Also got mines, for like half track, halfway done. Sandbags are in the east. 2 to 1 rushing against the engineers. Here we go, air dropped heavy machine gun. Again, no surprise. A six man 50 cal is a very handy thing to have. Yeah, the soak disco was largely equivalent to the American 50 cal machine gun, just fired slightly larger round, and was also produced in much, much smaller numbers. Oh, no, Scram's points in the center, ground points there. Got the flak half tag out here for Paulie, the 251-17. There's known as the Model C, actually. There's also a Model D, which rather went for a smaller turret design there, and the rest could also carry some infantry in the back. Might have to have done so. And later they were replaced by the 251, I think, dash 23 with a flak drilling. Anyways, country caught up with the flak half track, the 221 here, a lot of firepower delivered, but there you go, field and responding here, two polities, flak half track, pushing in the center, they're also being met here by Asher Blast forces in the west. 221, flak half track, being slightly pushed back, Ash Asher Blast is definitely not allowing Paul to just advance straight up their fields. Oh, fields. Fultz is being pushed back here in the center and the west side. Cool one around the point here. Flak half tank falling back for repairs. Cover there being wired off. And we got the 2 to 3 here. Pass plans were set up as a well, connecting point and the fuel point and secure pull that way. Much more fuel, allowing him to possibly rush ahead for some medium armor, though. Probably not. East side here, a bit of progress as well there for both sides. Steady advance here by Asher Block. Got that disc there being hauled to the front line here. Field gun being hauled up. Got the western field point there secured. Mines was about here for Pauli D. Sturm Pionier routed. And we're setting up on the point here instead. Again, suspect they had planned the field point, but obviously, with that being under threat, that would be a bit silly. Though, part of me suspects he should rather do it closer to his own base rather than here, unless he's trying to use it as some kind of bait, maybe. Oh, wait, that gets messed up at the consequence of the point here, anyway, so yeah. Could try and flank launching a sort through here, flanked up behind Ash's forces. Obviously, there's a bit of risk, but that will also require enough assault infantry in a sense to pull that off. But theoretically, could then cast the field in a pretty bad position, take it out maybe even. That could be something to consider there for Paul. Again, whether or not he does it is an entirely different matter. But there you go, does appear like might be getting that kind of attacky. Mine's being laid on as well by Asher. Thumbs up to that. Assault continues here. Disco, though, quick to respond here to the flank assault. Flag half tech wasn't quite there either. Machine guns here for Paul. Quite a handy asset. But at this point, won't do too much good. Obviously, flak having to do with the conscripts there. It's two centimeter flak gun. There you go, conscripts rounded. Monkey is only there for Paul. Oh, for Ash, I mean, not Paul. Paul, like most Obercorn's players, typically just sticks to one Sturm Pioneer squad if they can get away with it, which typically they can. 
I would argue there is definitely a utility in having two Sturm Pioneer Escorts. That means you can repair stuff fast. And again, with a bit of efficiency, they come under sort of fire, they can deploy, and then actually really harm your opponent's infantry. Plus, in a pinch, two Panzer Shrikes is, you know, pretty solid too. There you go. Line for the word for Paul. A bit of a light to infantry Geschütz Aktsin. You know, the name is a bit misleading. It was not developed in 1918, as the name you sort of would hint at. It's actually developed after that was done by the Germans, like, you know, make it appear like, oh, yeah, it's totally World War One vintage weapon. Totally like, you know, not developing anything new there, which they technically weren't supposed to. But they were developing a lot of stuff they weren't supposed to after the war. A lot. Almost got the flag half track there. West Suffolk got the Sturm PMF for the Western Fuel Point again here. The light infantry gun would also be, you know, worked alongside its larger cousin, the Schwerer Infanterie Geschütz, which was a 15 centimeter gun. Fun fact there. Comes right here by the full screen for the Sturmgewehrs and Car 90 Ks. T7 there for Paul or for Asher. East RT, counter attack launch, getting that fuel point back. And the folks called out a cover there, East is first here by Asher's Dishka. In the center, larger fight's about to engage here but without artillery support this is going to take forever here for Paul to do something but unless he gets lack of some suppressive shots which could happen it does happen actually wow that's impressive we'll start there fuel and grab with the cool button gears flanking we got the full steam with that field gun body in the machine gun position in return black happening up got mine spotted there narrowly close call there a lot of explosions all over the place like Ken have almost done there for Paul you can sort of argue it's a bit of a late T-70, around 11, 12 minutes. Most of the time, you typically want to run close to the 7 if you're, if you're doing well, but obviously Ash is not. And certainly against the Obok Commander Vest, whereas, again, they do have a slightly slower attack pace. It's not necessarily a bad idea against, to go up for a T-70 here at this point against them. There's something worth noting. Yeah, we're not really seeing much of the Commander so far. Probably due to some pressure and all that, but, you know, still... Discus would be, oh, I mean, SVD 40s would be good idea for the conscripts here. And certainly, personally, I would love to see some guards here on troops. Quite solid infantry, but they do tend to get overlooked. Part because, you know, if you're looking for guards or calling infantry, you're typically just going for the guards rather than infantry, which is better in most circumstances, at least in terms of just broad utility, because they like, you know, they get anti tank rifles and light machine guns, so, you know, they cover a broader field there. Sending out key armor car there, close to base, and securing a point there for a bit of extra fuel munitions here for Paul. West we'll start there, fuel point falling to the dead army once more, and just not slowing down here. Very good. Looks like we might be seeing the moves here for mechanized armor company for Asher, perhaps. The way then you need to sort of lining up here, staring at the fields. Second line for going for Paul. More artillery here. He could also like go for Shreya. There we go. Mechanized on the company up. So probably not looking at SD40s, unfortunately. Looking at just the otherwise, you know, very, very, very good mobilizer service upgrade. Yeah, I think Paul could like go on for the Shreya Panzer quarters, maybe start pushing for like Orbital down here for Sasha instead. But certainly having two artillery pieces against the Surge, but still one, you know, digging in a lot is not a bad idea either. Far oh, from it. Good falling back here. Teasing on the move here. West side here. Comes from the button. So, as I always point out, like, it's really like, you know, the mortars like infantry guns are typically always a good thing to have in a 1v1 map. So, you know, not a bad idea for Paul to invest into two of these. Asher, meanwhile, has yet to invest into an artillery, though, of course, will likely invest into a slightly larger weapon system, aka the BM 13 Katusha rocket truck. Go, truck out for Paul, the Schwerer Wehrmacht Schlepper for the Schwerer Panzer Headquarters or Hauptquartier. We got plenty of mines here for Paul, the Schutzminus 42, which was specifically an anti infantry mine, by the way, as the name sort of hints at. For those that speak German, that is. Lots of mines, in fact, there from Paul. Lots of Schutzminus. Pulling the knees here, push back. Truck me up. And we got the field on here for Paul. Oh, for Asher again. Why do I keep calling Asher for Paul? I'm sorry, Asher. I'm not trying to call you Paul there. 
Mine Z Asher. Probably being hammered with the T's and Light Tank. Fort Thumb and Gun there raking off death. Who Wagner Ching Vetchy 2 here for Paul. Now one thing about the Kuppelwagen, it does get expansion in by units. Of course there's no way to tell unless you sort of know ahead of time or really pay attention. Coming V does slightly to actually mark units that gain, you know, experience from other units that buy actually. So that's a little nice feature addition there. East side MG34 is the advancing engineers, but they quickly bypass it, forcing poultry position retreat. Tilify takes out the money, killing several conscripts nearby as well. Very good. Deska they also in a bit of a tough spot there versus two light infantry guns if they start barraging the position. That could quickly cost Ash there a hay machine gun there on the west side though. Fairly well positioned. Slow moving head here. Orbs on there for Paul. Thumbs up. Ash there with the upgrades for the conscripts. Again, no SD 40s and so no guards airborne. He said that flak up tech pushing back the engineers. Five kills close to Vetchany 2. Field gun shoots. But not quite able to see where it is. Just sort of randomly hopes to get lucky and instead, you know. Hits a fence. Time for guns going at it here. Just get there being buried in a tilly fire here. And push back. Other two light tank fans like your shots. Black after rushing in pretty aggressively. Wow, I've, maybe it's a misclick, maybe it's a brain fart, but I think sending your flak half tank as the first unit like that is definitely very tactically advisable. In this case, got very lucky. Could have been knocked out there by the field guns. They got a good shot for the smoke even. Also pushing against the field gun here. All of a sudden, they're being hammered as well. They're down to two men already. Heavy damage from the T7 light tank and the constant nearby. Great for Asher, but certainly puts a bit of a dent here into Paul's otherwise a little aggressive push. He almost got the field gun here, but no backs off from the attempt here. Probably going to for the Conscript, I've said. Need to be that all of a foot gets robbed. We're going for the T-70 here. Didn't get the field gun here, though, but did get a wipe on one of Asher's Conscript scores. So obviously, it's not all bad here for Paul. Not all bad, and crucially, didn't lose the Orbital Garden. t forced to withdraw for now for repairs. On the west side here, Asher launching a pretty hefty counterattack with a mix of engineers, Conscripts, and a hay machine gun team here. Versus Paul's push in the center of the machine gun busy. Line for guns holding back here, but looks like they might be holding a bit up to the front line further to hit new socialist targets. In the west side here, the Dishka is absolutely tearing Paul's left flank asunder, leaving numerous men dead in the green fields. So there you go. Schwer Pentacles yet to be authorized. Back at Asher's base, could go for the T-34. Goes for the Kachusha, probably, you know, a lot of support weapons, and crucially, I imagine the light like, infant guns. Are probably causing Asher to consider, like, you know, some artillery of their own to deal with that particular Teutonic Troublemakers set. Can't think of the line for guns there. Five and two kills. We got four in the semis between 83 victory points wise. It's fairly close between the two players. Fairly close. Black half tank leader appears. He start there, mine goes off, killing some engineers with they shoot. Now, actually, they risk setting off into another mine, getting wiped. Or more mines, have somehow. There's a final response from Paul to that. Katusha's almost on that for Ash yet. Probably would have preferred seeing a T-34 from 6 first, but certainly again, considering the place of Paul, like Katusha is know, pretty handy dandy. Infantry the move here. There we go, that's retreat, right into the mine, and there you go, that's a new squad white flame for a loss as well. It's a pretty decent investment there for Paul. There you go, Katrusha there unleashing a massive rocket barrage against the position of the line for guns as expected. Asher wants to silence the German artillery battery here. That's set, the rockets are not quite heading well here, but they at least do force Paul to withdraw the light infantry gun, so it's not complete waste there. Advancing in the center, east side all being grabbed. We got the T7 rushing in and a contact on the move here. Pull very close to Panther 4. They could also be saving up for Panther, or supposed to go for Yak Panzer. We shall see which of these options Paul will be considering. Or less, or, there's also, of course, option C, which is like he's dreaming King Tiger, or option D, which is the Sturm Tiger. West side, a few mines going off again. Surprisingly, the German players were laying down a lot more mines than the Soviet player. Typically, it's the Soviets actually just laid down and 
immense number of mines here, but it's Paul Sylvester's been busy with that. Tsum, they're hitting one of the mines again. But fortunately for Ash, though, Paul has no forces nearby to exploit this development. Sending in the minesweepers to just check for all mines. At this point, I think Ash is figuring, ha, he must lay down a lot of mines there, and Asher was correct. The west side, actually, some mines going off from the Germans. Panther 4 there, two thirds laid down there for Paul D and the 10th Panzer Sean and Asher is finally able to pull in the teeth at force from 6 e He's nearly fixed up. Forcing got the 2 to 3 here with 7 kills, reps from 2 1. And for almost done. Yo, Pantafor ready. Oops, the conscripts. T-34 some 6, right around the corner of our ship, but Paul's Panzer 4 is hitting the field first. Slow might see a flank attempt around here. Just got almost right up with the line finger guns there, got another Katrusha Bauer here. No, this time, okay, shooting at the machine gun, a bit close as well there. It's only a bit more crucial pinpoint element at the moment. Disco though got wiped here by Paul's infantry guns. Machine gun though return did get wiped, but actually can't quite exploit. There we go, Dogfins and the Pantafor, one shot bounces, one does not. Pantafor push back up with the field guns though, obviously can't survive much more than that. And the full swords force back. Do get an incendiary grenade to at least keep Asher off the machine gun there, at least try to, but Asher just doesn't really care. I suppose like someone who likes really spicy food just keeps eating, Asher just, you know, wants that machine gun despite the incendiary burns that are being inflicted on the men. Hey, Tifa going for the flak half tack, hits the Kubelbargen instead. Chanting him in that Tifa for some six. Looks like they'll only get the Kubelbargen. Oh, that's still better than nothing. The Kem's also in a bit of a danger zone here. Tifa and Fangway there. All of a sudden they're ripping into the console almost popping out. There you go, Tifa for Rams the abandoned Panzer IV. <laughs> well, I mean, it ensures it's dead, and certainly quite blurred that a portal loses Panzer IV like that, but still feels a bit silly to ram like an abandoned tank. I imagine what happened is, like, they rammed the tank ahead of time, and then suddenly it was abandoned, and, like, you know, they kept at it anyways. Lamp's gone 10 kills, 32 T's moving up here, and the T-34 from 6 is just stuck. So, Paul should at least be able to avenge the loss of his uh, hand of fall there. And of course, crucially, Asher Blockham will quickly replace the T-34 from 6, and Paul can replace the Panda 4. Land Cup, then the conscripts. T-34, took it off. Bit of armor there to salvage. You can see there, Asher Blockham's already on work on that one. Wrecking the tanks, so Paul can't salvage them for fuel. He's salvaging, breaking the Panzer IV, but apparently not the T-34. So maybe that's not what Asher was doing there, actually. Which is about she unleashed upon the positions of Paul. A ton of rockets there screaming for the sky. See rockets slamming in there, almost taking out the line for gun crews, but they do survive. Another future artillery engagement. T-34 more there. As expected, Eastern Victor Homing Seas for the Red Army as well. Back here, Troop Enforcing Healing. Two to three, getting a bit of a move on. Fresh waves of men there from Paul's base. Fresh on the move, got fresh mines. Has one place the infant lost there. Two to three though hits a mo well anti tank right I suppose specifically. Molotovs as well here. In the west side though, mines going off here, killing several consequences there. But there's still plenty of left to do what is necessary. For that army. The Soviet Union. Jump in here, caught laying down mines here. Grabbing that eastern victory point here. Fresh T-Fit for Ryan, the west side here, Conscripts push back with a flag half tack, but T-2 means it is very, very lethal for infantry. And there you go, T-34, send a sleeping to the front here by Asher Block. Steadily ahead. 
Loads of sandbags here from Paul AD. And Armored Carnage is pulled back towards more secure fuel emanations here for Paul. And strange that I can over that T-54-6, Infantry Wing West was there to defend the fuel point. East side could try and advance the fuel point there, but clearly isn't too keen on that. And we got Paul here now with a Jagdpanzer. Deciding that he needs something with a bit more range to it. T-54, there's the full is pushing them back. All of a sudden they're keeping a bit more respectful distance. And we got the Kachushi there firing off, hoping to get lucky. But again, Ash is... Not really having any luck here. There you go. T7 in the flank on the Kevin train doesn't take out the T Fed Force from 6. Yak Panther still in the way of a pull. These going to take a bit longer there for him to get to the field. T7 that's being absolutely pumped in return by German fire. Batching feed has achieved the ace level. In the center, Fultz's meanwhile are most achieving a burial if they're not careful. It's going to murder us away there. There you go, Yak pans out. That should give uh, Ash's arm a bit more to fear. Comes to the corp of the flak after that to reload. Damage engine, but with a Sturm Punier right nearby, that can quickly be rectified. That bit of damage machine there on the eastern fuel point here. 3 and 14 versus 3 and 8. Pretty close in terms of big two points now. Yak Panzer running about there with its high velocity 75 minute gun. As for Asha, might be another T-54-6. There could also be more Katrushas or an H-5 here. Enemy are capturing our supplies. Going for that eastern point here. Bit of slow trading of training between the two sides. Still feel like Asha could do with a bit more infantry. For Paul, more armor would benefit him a bit. There you go, T7 can use restraint to the Yak Panzer, which misses the Kenner, though does not score. So direct hit here with the 8 mm rocket. T7, there you go, fires the heat shell, almost takes it out. But the T7 does escape with a very minute sliver of health here. Close call there for Asher. Machine gun flak up the right and the conscripts there. We've seen much uh, fewer and ultra crucially less intense engagement at this point. Both players sort of, you know, falling into a more, shall we say, slow and steady pattern at this point. Both got a lot of, shall we say, defensive weapons. Both are sort of, you know, going for the longer haul here. Might even be that Paul might be dreaming of stalling out for a King Tiger at this stage already. Asher, meanwhile, of course, wishes to, shall we say, somehow break the stalemate and it's looking to do that with a bit of shock and awe that it is going for even more Kachuja rocket launch that we try and shatter Paul's front line here. Because Ash is probably figuring that if Paul goes for King Tiger, Asher might be in a bit of trouble. So that seems to be the choice of decision making. We shall of course see what Paul's going to go for and if Asher can sort of shall say mess it up with the second Kachusha. 308 was 289. Well, sandbags, like, he's really taking a very slow approach here. Lots of sandbags. Go. t is the Yak Panzer that came over. And there you go. Actually got knocked out. Great kill here. Comes from the center being hammered here on the west side. t for the getting the folks are pushing him back. Katrusha number two ready. It's two Katrushas. Could be a very large rocket barrage against Paul. We found the center here. Steady advancing the center here. Oh, actually, on the offense. Again, there we go. Katrusha fired this time around trying to push back the infantry. One Katrusha enacted or fired off the other one range from the server here. Perhaps hoping to bait Paul into something here by only finding the one Katrusha they all he already knows about. And then, you know, say once he makes the move to counter that, whatever, like then Ash strikes with the second Katrusha, or perhaps it's just incidental. I don't know. Mines in the east side again. Note the once wore the uh, path of mines here. Ready to execute. To execute. Under there you go, fire here. Line for gun this time. They're taking the full brunt of it. And there you go. Wipes the line for gun crew entirely. Very good bouch there for Asher Block. 
Probably also got some scrolls in the process. Back here, not much further going on. There. As for Paul, similarly, no signs of much there. I mean, there's also, again, the potential of a Storm Tiger, but starting to get the impression that Paul might be setting up for something big. We got mines here. We spotted, routed. Samex destroyed. More mines here for Mash yet. Thumbs up. It's time to catch up with some of all of Paul's mining. Southeast field comes to the move that comes as well. Machine gun flag half tank in the east. Think east was there we go. Heading, I think, a sore spot here in Paul's front line here. Southeast. Great versus infantry with the flag half and the machine gun, but lacking any anti tank support there. The T 34 can easily just shove the entire thing off. So. Definitely exploding a weakness there in Paul's front line, but there goes train to mines. Though this case they actually linked up too close to each other, so one mines off the other one, but without doing extra damage to the T-34. Got their fair share in a sense, less so for Paul. The highlights the danger of placing your mines too close to each other like that. Telefar around the center on the west side, we got the Yak Panzer to serve. Yeah, definitely looking like either Sturm Tiger here or possibly King Time. It could also technically still be a Panther. But getting the impression again it's something bigger. In the east side here, mines going off there, Kongs was killed, and they're retreating well for some of them. But crucially, again, the T-54 did itself for this extra mine, so avoiding a white name. More T-54 out Another T-34. Yeah, the Keep it for moving up here. Field gun supporting. As for Paul, things so far remain a bit static. Got the Sturm Puny over the Panzer Shrek as well. Black half tech spotted and utterly destroyed here. Pitchu Shivai here. Feels like Ash has got a pretty good hold of what Paul's up to and what he's doing, and it's now he's starting to like read her. And there you go. Heading on mining the Yak Panzer Chopper, the T 54 does get Panther Faust in his train, can't easily flank, but even then it still has flank. There you go. Rocket strong inbound here from the tactical Shumik rocket run. Almost took it out. The second T 54 rushing in is going to knock out that Yak Panzer. There you go. Scores an easy kill here. Great there for Asher. Another problem there for Paul. Could go for the Sturm Tiger here. But I think the two T-34s and those and all that, I think Asher is, or Paul's more likely to consider the uh, Koenig Seeger as an attempt here. Fultz is pushing forward here, Ryan to Dishkus, and Infinity Fire here. T-34s also blazing away, Fultz going to these Sturm Punier Kern members, they're all in pursuit here. Fultz going to destroy those tanks. They're definitely looking like a King Tiger stall, though he does like the Mechanized Regiment. Definitely lacking it. And there you go, forced retreat here. There's too much fire here from Asher in the east here, center. Machine halting the contract advance here from Asher. And there you go, straight up Panzer quarters, providing a bit extra boost there. Really expensive now here for Paul. Suffered some rather immense losses. And we can see he's responding here. We're going for another cannon. We have to have to deal with all this Soviet armor. And of course. Has to be mindful of the double Katusha Sea, which, you know, under the right circumstances could inflict some pretty grim casualties on the Kettenwerfers. And there you go, we're buying the base here. Paul, though, was able to get out on any time. Of course, the medics can't get away. The chief veterans one in fact, on Katusha there. Opening up for the. Creeping Barrage. Katusha Barrage in the east gets the machine gun there. We got 261 versus 279. Mines again. Very good work there. There we go. The final track here for Paul, and that will be the Mechanized Regiment, at which point we are very likely looking at a King Tiger Stall for Paul, or at least an attempted stall. Problem is, if he can actually manage it under current circumstances. I mean, if he can, he might still have a shot, but even then, like, there's two field guns, the T-34s, 
and the rocket strikes. So the problem is he might be presenting a very large target here for Asher Blah. Which Asher Blah could arguably just, you know, knock out there if Paul isn't careful. So, not entirely sure this is the optimal move there for Paul, honestly. Not entirely sure under current circumstances. Coming about here. Reaper considering more sandbags, but siding against it. Has been holed up. Again, more mines here. The path of mines is once from being re-established by Paul. Nick and Nas are almost done. Fifth force. Katusha's being holed to the front line here again. But Ash is definitely looking fairly strong in the current position here versus Paul. And again, Paul's strategy so far is only, I think, getting more free range into Ash, which Paul really should not be doing. Mines. Ken Mav's flying away there. One hit, one miss, and the T-54 from six. West side here, pawns being seized. Mechanized ranging up. Close to the King Tiger in terms of fuel, and even almost there with manpower. Tusha Barrage off against the mechanics that lined right up to, next to each other. Definitely a very big target for the Katusha rocket launcher. And the west side here, Assault going in here. Nice push there by Asher and Ango. Really ripping through Paul's forces. Making a difficult thing to sort for the King Tiger, but he's got the field right in a few seconds. Man, power he's not far, but it will mean these troops will not be reinforced here, which could delay things otherwise. So, second Katusha Barrage joining in here. Right to the base here. Oh, God, him, him, oh. The rockets are causing an immense amount of carnage and casualties. 16 kills here. Infantry, medics. Anti-tank gun crews, they're all being just viciously torn apart here by Ashes Katusha. And the Shrap Hunter is about to get knocked out here. Very close to the King Tiger, but the question is, uh, what will the King Tiger be supporting at this stage? And in fact, there's some reinforced troops, at least a bit here. I think they can have, just have something to hit back against the T-Fed Force with. But again, that will further delay the King Tiger and further risk putting Paul D into pretty much, you know, terminal death spiral here within the game. Grand these some points. Mine's up. Our enemy has only 200 points. This is our now. So this is looking pretty rough. We do have the King Tiger out now. The Tiger 2 A here. The Tiger B. Setting up with that one. 183 versus 279. Adding the Panzer Commandant. But yeah, odds are looking kind of grim. We got two field guns, we got the T Fed Force, and we got the Rocket Strike, and an infinite number of snares. So the odds are heavily stacked against the King Tiger here. Heavily stacked. Does that mean it's impossible? Not necessarily, but it's gonna be a bit tough. Not entirely sure what Paul is doing there either with like Ed So, better movement here. Going to see advancing, one kill, and there you go. Feelings found way that both shots easily penetrating the King Tiger's frontal armor. Some bounces for once. More Katusha fire here. King Tiger takes another penetrating hit at more or less max range there. Phoenix Tiger will need repairs. And again, we sort of see the issue with the King Tiger already. It's just like this really big target. It just is easily pushed back as well there. So, his options are limited. Now, he needs like somehow launch a really impressive assault that sweeps Asher aside. But at the same time, his current force composition is not exactly set up for it either. So, it's a bit of a tough spot. That's a bit of the issue with like going for all these support weapons and then suddenly like he has to attack with them like... Not necessarily super great. Some there goals got bunched up. Further making each type for the Katusha T-34. Ramming the King Tiger. It is an absolute mess here for Paul. For the German army. The 10th Panzer de Shawn. Armored car knocked out. Rocket strike going in. The infantry's dying in the numbers. The Sturmovic basically hits nothing. At this point, it is very much, I think, GG here. 
Pole will probably keep trying to struggle a bit longer, but as she's got massive resource reserves at this point, Pole's got, well, sod all, except like, you know, heavily damaged King Tiger and a bit of infantry, which Ashy could just keep blasting away with the Cachucius and just hope to murder Pole's stuff. We also got an increasingly decreasing number of victory points here for Paul. 78 versus 279 here for Asher, so we're looking very, very unfavored for Paul. Very unfavored. And yeah, Asher's just like starting to churn out as many T-34s and 6s as they can, because, well, that's a sensible thing to do under current circumstances. I could choose your barrage here. This time going for the creeping barrage. Not quite hitting much with it. Except a bit on the hits on the King Tiger there. 48. But fine, I mean, Paul definitely believes in victory here. At least the political officer company believes in victory. Thirty-nine, thirty-six. Give us the cat now here, backed up in the years. Thirty-three. Thirty. Currently taking an advantage with the heat shells here. Almost got it. We got field guns on the flank here. Revving through the King Tiger's armor. Twenty-seven. Twenty-four. Got the T-34 from six. Field guns about to get knocked out. 18 points left, 15, 12, troops retreating from there in the west, 9, 6, 3, and that's going to be 0 then in a few seconds, there you go, GG game over, he lost here for Paul, a big treat for Asher, he was part of a lot of back and forth and then Paul Strand he had a few flaws and Ash I think was very keen he able to fit, sort of figure out the flaws and exploit them quite efficiently and so Paul kind of managed to like paint himself into a corner inadvertently leaving unable to really respond here to Ash efficiently so there you go hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something from it if you did subscribe like share comment you can also consider donating to support the Prime Minister cast by the link in the video description. You can pledge on Patreon. You can also you know, consider pure in the game by the link in the comments. Use the code stuog 3 g as it is written there to get a 15% cut of sales. That's a very nice way to support me and get the game. And I'll let you know, comment, like, share, subscribe, talk about the video and what you liked. This is Imperial Link Cheers, and see you all tomorrow for a nice episode. Bye.